Welcome everyone, it's Mr. Christopher. I'm here to tell you about heat and specific heat capacity. Now, a couple things you need to know, first of all, is materials are different. If you put your hand on a piece of plastic or you put your hand on a piece of metal, they feel different. And in part, this has to do with energy that's transferred, which is referred to as heat. When you add two different substances together, uh, the temperature of the mixture depends on the mass and the final temperature of the samples. If you have a container of water and a cup of water, the large container will have more mass and have a certain temperature, and the small container will have a certain mass and temperature as well. When you mix them together, you have to take into consideration the mass and the temperature at which they start with. That's because heat and temperature are different concepts. Temperature, as you remember, is the average kinetic energy of all the molecules. Heat is the measure of the energy transferred. Now, thermal energy refers to the amount of energy in a sample, so it accounts for the mass and the um, average kinetic energy. So the total kinetic energy associated with the mass and motions of the particles in a sample of matter is the thermal energy. So if you have more mass, kinetic, kinetic energy is one-half mv squared, so if your mass, if you have more mass of a substance, you're going to have more total kinetic energy. And so you add this up, and that equals the sum, or the total kinetic energy, which is called the thermal energy. Now when we're talking about energy, the unit, one of the units used for energy is called the calorie. This is used to measure the amount of heat transferred and to express thermal energy. It depends on three characteristics, the mass, m, the change in temperature, delta T, delta means change, and the specific heat capacity, which here is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. The value of one calorie per gram degree Celsius applies only to water. Now, the definition of the calorie unit is the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one Celsius degree. You may have heard the word calorie used when you're talking about food, the amount of calories in the food. And we'll be talking about food calories. This here is sometimes even referred to as a chemistry calorie, not a food calorie, because it refers specifically to chemical situations. So it's a different unit. So I need you to be aware of that. Now, when we look at temperature and heat, there are differences. Temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy. And then the thermal energy is a measure of the total kinetic energy. Thermal energy can only be measured as heat transfer between two samples of known temperature and known mass. Heat transfer, which is abbreviated Q, lowercase q usually, is measured in calories. The amount of energy required to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius is equal to one calorie. Okay. So that's the definition of a calorie, how many, how much calories does it take to get one gram by one degree Celsius. And that's why the definition here for water, Q equals the mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. Now I've been using the term specific heat capacity and we'll talk a little bit more about that in detail. So if you've had one beaker containing 500 grams of water at 75, you also have a beaker with 2,000 grams of water at the same temperature, which will melt more ice. So we've got a beaker, and the beaker, which one will melt more ice? The 500 gram or the 2,000 gram? Absolutely. Definitely the 2,000 gram. Now, why is that? Well, in terms of thermal energy, it's dependent on the mass and the change in temperature. So this one over here has 500 grams. That's the mass. The change in temperature, this here is at 75 degrees Celsius and it could go all the way down to the melting temperature of ice, which is zero degrees Celsius. And then this one, the mass is 2,000 grams, and change in temperature is still going from 75 to zero degrees Celsius. So if you look at this, it's two times 75, or about 150, one, two, three. That's how many calories on this one. And this five times 75, that's 35, 5 times 5 is 25, 37, 5, 0, I believe, 1, 2, somewhere in there, there you go, 5 times 7, 5 times 7, 
five, five, two, thirty-five, three seventy-five, and two zeros. There we go. So as we can see here, the amount of calories is obviously different. This is much greater than that is. Now, specific heat capacity is referring to that middle term we saw. For water, it was one calorie per gram degree Celsius. However, if you put a pot of water on the stove, before long you cannot touch the metal pot, but you can still put your finger comfortably in the water. So, what are two different hypotheses to explain why? Give us a moment to answer that question. Pause the video. Oh, I'm back. What could be a possible hypothesis? Well, the water is definitely different than the metal. These are different materials. So you add heat to the metal, add heat to the water, adding Q to the water, adding Q to the metal. Heat's going into them, into them. The water's temperature, small change. The metal's temperature, big change. So it changes more. What could be? Well, it could be that the water is absorbing more heat than the metal. Well, the metal's absorbing it, but it's also releasing it. The temperature, the kinetic energy of the metal is going up. The average kinetic energy of the water is not going up as much. So some reasons why that happens, we've got different materials, it has to do with the energy being transferred. Somehow in the water, energy comes in and it doesn't cause the water molecules to move as much. So. Different substances respond to heat transfer differently, just like water and metal. This is referred to as specific heat capacity, the heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of substance by one degree Celsius. And the units for specific heat capacity are often in calories per gram degree Celsius, if you're using the calorie as a unit of energy. Now, energy, when you have specific heat capacity, that's the energy required to raise the temperature. If you think about this as an application, in the summertime, if you're at a swimming pool, what's the best place to stand? Do you want to stand in the concrete? Do you want to stand in water that is spilled on the pool deck? Do you want to stand on the metal pole Okay, that's called the shepherd's crook? Do you want to stand on a piece of metal? Well, most people would say, I never want to stand on a piece of metal. Concrete, that might be really hot. The water, when it comes out of the pool, that's the best option, not the metal or the concrete. So if we have water, we have metal, uh, let's just say it was a copper item, which you may not be in the actual pool, and then you have concrete. These two substances differ. What differs about them is water has the highest specific heat capacity. Its specific heat capacity is greater than concrete, and concrete is greater than copper. And these differences in heat capacity allow the copper to heat up, heat up faster, and the water to heat up slower, and the concrete again to be in the middle. Specific heat, heat capacity is abbreviated CP. It's used to measure heat transfer, Q equals MCP delta T. This is the equation for heat transfer. So let's say we pour 50 grams of hot water at 70 degrees Celsius onto 59 grams of brass at 20 degrees Celsius. So we got 50 grams in here, which is 70 degrees Celsius, onto 59 grams of brass at 20 degrees Celsius. So we got 59.0 grams, 20 degrees Celsius. The final temperature, temperature final of both substances is 65.2 degrees Celsius. From this information, we should be able to figure out the specific heat capacity of the brass. Now, which one is at a higher temperature, the brass or the water? The water is. So the heat is going to go from the water into the brass. Okay? So this is the Q. So from the water's point of view, the Q for the water is going to be equal to the mass of the water times specific heat capacity times change in temperature. Mass of the water is 50.0 grams. Specific heat capacity of water, that was the, that's the one that's 1 calorie per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature is going from 70 okay, to 65.2. Okay, 70 to 65.2. Now, to do change in temperature, one of the things that's unique about this is we want to take the 
final temperature minus the initial temperature. Now what this is going to give us is the final is 65.2, the initial is 70.0 degrees Celsius. So if we take these two into account, we're going to get a negative number. So on our calculator, if we type in 65, 65.2 minus 70.0, enter, we get negative 4.8. So here we get negative 4.8 degrees Celsius. We multiply that by 1 times 50, and this equals a value of negative 240 calories. Now at first it may seem weird. Wait a minute, how can we have a negative Q? Well, negative Q means that the heat is leaving the hot water, and it means it's going into the metal, which would have a positive Q. So in terms of the equation, this is the amount of heat that's leaving the water, and it's going all into the metal. So from the metal's point of view, it's gaining 240 calories. The Q equation for the metal is equal to the mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature, again, but for the metal, not for the water. So the mass of the metal, we look at that, boom, we got 59.0 grams of metal, put that here. Specific heat capacity, oh, don't know that. Change in temperature, oh, we're going from 20 to 65.2. So 65.2 is my final temperature, 65.2 minus 20. And I kind of ran out of room there. So you take your 65.2 and your minus your 20 from that, you should get a positive 45.2 value. So in our equation, we now have 240 equals 59.0 times CP times 45.2. So we need to solve for CP, so we divide both sides by 45.2, which cancels that out. Divide both sides by 59, which cancels that out. So 240 divided by 59 equals, divided by 45.2 equals, and we get a specific heat capacity, a value for CP for the metal, equal to 0 0.09995. And that's in calories per gram degree Celsius. So this is how we can determine the specific heat capacity of a piece of metal if we don't know its specific heat capacity. So specific heat capacity can be determined by using the Q equation. You can use specific heat capacity to find the heat. You could even use it to find the change in temperature as well. All variations on this Q equation. Now, to review what we know, different substances respond differently to heat transfer. We know metal, water, prime example, water takes longer to heat up, but it also takes longer to cool down. That's why we cook with water. You heat up the water to 100 degrees Celsius, it's boiling, it's going to take a long time for that water to cool down. The metal will heat up faster, the pot will get really hot, but then when you put water in there, it's going to actually cool down the pot. So that's one thing, one reason why people add water to fires, to cool them down, to reduce the heat. Now, the specific heat capacity of a substance is the quantity of energy needed to raise the temperature one gram by one degree Celsius. A substance with a higher specific heat capacity requires a larger transfer of energy uh, than one with a lower specific heat capacity. So metal has a lower specific heat capacity. Water has a higher specific heat capacity. So here's our check-in question. What you're going to do is uh, answer these check-in questions for the assignment, and we will see you later. Once again, Mr. Christopher talking about heat and specific heat capacity.